Call of Duty Black Ops 1 is legitimately one of the greatest first person shooter games ever made. Next to Medal of Honor Frontlines, of course. I mean, just look at this. This is what a real FPS game looks like. Anyways, we're talking about Black Ops 1 today. Call of Duty Black Ops 1 was released in November of 2010 for the Xbox 360, PS3, the Wii, and even the DS, because everyone had to get on the Black Ops 1 craze. If you ever meet anybody who says that the DS version of BO1 was their go-to way to play the game, run. Now, prior to Black Ops 1's release, Call of Duty games more or less followed the same theme. World War 2, World War 2, World War 2, Modern Warfare, and then in 2008, we went back to World War 2. Seriously, it's insane how much this franchise just couldn't stay away from World War 2. That all changed with Black Ops 1, though, because for the first time ever in Call of Duty, we were leaving the realm of World War 2 and going into different territory, the Vietnam War. Black Ops 1 was a pretty significant change of pace for the franchise as it was drastically different from any of the games that had come before it. It used actual real world history and historical footage to tell its story, it had a pretty kick-ass multiplayer, and it took the zombies mode from World at War and expanded on it, giving us maybe one of the best zombies modes in the entire franchise. Now, it's worth noting that I missed out on Black Ops 1 during its prime as I was too busy playing, yep, you guessed it, Shadow the Hedgehog. Who needs Black Ops 1 when I have this? When I got my Xbox 360 in 2012, though, one of the first games I ever played was Black Ops 1, and what an experience it was. Not sure I only played the demo, but even in the short time I had with it, it was unlike anything I had ever played before. It's for this reason that Black Ops 1 will always be one of my favorite FPS games of all time, and honestly, that goes for the rest of the Black Ops series as well. Not you! So because of that, and with Black Ops 6 on the horizon, over the next few weeks, I'll be doing nothing but retrospectives on Black Ops 1, 2, 3, EW, Black Ops Cold War, and ending it off with Black Ops 6 at the beginning of November. And for those of you upset that I won't be covering BO4, I'll make it up to you by letting my friend John Jimmy give his own review on the game in a minute or less. Hi, I'm John Jimmy, and I'm on a time crunch of why Black Ops 4 is just better. So first, we got no campaign, and for the one percenters, a substitute of Specialist HQ, which is more of a tutorial, but close enough. Multiplayer. But the game is so dead now, you can only play free-for-all around the midday if you live in the States. Other than that, if you like Black Ops 2 gameplay, like Black Ops 3 Specialist, and love to gamble just to be able to use half the guns, you'll like multiplayer. World League. Zombies. Like the rest of the game, theoretically, you'll love it. Elixirs like gobble gums, you can drink when you wanna pick your perks go ahead you want to customize your starting weapon lethal gotta level up but sure want an ultimate weapon pick one of four we got new maps remake of maps continued story after three ended it and my favorite totally not a test run put together last minute because of the phenomenon of battle royales blackout it's got perks you can use at will funny multiplayer maps the mystery box and zombies you can get down but if you're finished oh <laughs> it's finished and my favorite part paint cans there black ops 4 has been talked about are you happy now well now that we got that out of the way i think it's time we dive into black ops 1 and find out what exactly made it so great Well, if I'm going to talk about Black Ops 1, I of course have to talk about the campaign first because Black Ops 1 probably has one of the best campaigns in the entire franchise. Now, up until this point, COD campaigns have always been a mixed bag with COD 4s being what I would call just okay and COD 1 through 3, I don't know yet. I'll get back to you when I actually decide to play them. Every COD campaign before Black Ops always had the problem of the protagonist not being interesting in the slightest because they were usually silent and never really gave you a reason to care about them. Sure, they made Soap from COD 4 more interesting in MW2, but in COD 4, I just didn't care about him all that much. Part of the reason BO1's campaign was so good and as memorable as it was, was because Alex Mason was such a good protagonist. He was actually his own person. He talked for himself and it made it easier to really care about him as a character. As for the story itself, it's incredibly engaging and fun. There is not a single point in the story where nothing is happening because it's always moving. The game will constantly flash images and various historical clips on screen to keep you hooked and it gives you a good idea of what exactly Mason's going through throughout the campaign. The story begins with Mason being interrogated by a mysterious figure about a number station and someone named Dragovich which then leads us into the first mission of the game where we have to assassinate Fidel Castro in Cuba. Cuba didn't like the 
that one very much. After killing Castro, we attempt to escape from Cuba and uh-oh, it turns out the Castro we killed was actually a fake and the real Castro was still alive. So then we get caught by Dragovich and sent to Vorkuto, which is where we meet Reznov. Yes, that Reznov from the world at war. Reznov ends up directing everyone to break free from Vorkuta and in the end, sacrifices himself for Mason to get us freedom from Vorkuta. After Vorkuta, we're sent to the Pentagon, which gives us maybe one of the coolest scenes in any Call of Duty ever, in which we're nearly forced to kill JFK, and it's also where we're told more about Dragovich, so it's our mission to stop him. The next mission, we're given the task of rescuing Weaver after he had his fucking I gouged out by Kravchenko. Jesus Christ. After freeing Weaver, Mason ends up wanting to go after Dragovich, and as a result, Kravchenko escapes. Well, fuck. It's worth noting that most of the campaign is told in the form of flashbacks, while some of it is told in the present, when Mason's getting interrogated. It's a really interesting way to tell the story, and it works incredibly well. After that, we're sent straight into Vietnam to investigate Soviet involvement in Vietnam with Woods, Bowman, and Hudson. After fighting our way through Vietnam, we make it to Hugh City, where we meet a familiar face. That's right, Reznov's back, bitches! As it turned out, Reznov was the Soviet defector we were searching for, and after finding him, we fight our way through Hugh City to reach extraction. After escaping Hugh City, the CIA ends up identifying Kravchenko, Steiner, and Clark as being Dragovich's men. This is also where we find out that they're all behind Project Nova, or as Reznov called it, Nova 6. This then leads us into another flashback where we actually get to play as Hudson and have to interrogate Dr. Clark, who was the chemical engineer behind Nova 6. After peacefully interrogating Dr. Clark, we get ambushed and have to escort Dr. Clark to safety. After jumping onto a roof, Hudson asks Clark about the numbers, which are the key to stopping Nova 6, and just as Dr. Clark is about to answer, and the key to yeah, I don't think you survived that. After this mission, we're told that Nova 6 is a nerve toxin and extremely dangerous, which then leads us into a flashback mission where we play as Reznov during his time in World War II, which not only shows us Reznov's history with Dragovich, Steiner, and Kravchenko, but it also gives us more of an insight as to how deadly Nova 6 truly is. We find out that Reznov had destroyed Nova 6 to keep it from the British, but apparently that wasn't enough, and this more or less sets up the story for the rest of the campaign. After this, we're tasked with eliminating Kravchenko, so we fight our way through Vietnam once again, where we eventually run into Reznov again. So we make our way through a rat tunnel, only to find out that Kravchenko had it rigged to explode. After this, Mason ends up being told not to trust Reznov, and that he's been brainwashed. This takes us to Laos to retrieve Nova 6. In the end, we end up getting captured by Dragovich, so Hudson continues the search for Nova 6 without Woods, Mason, and Bowman. We then get an AC-130 mission, where we have to guide Hudson and his team to keep them from getting caught. After this, we have the Yamatau, since it's the suspected site, of the Project Nova Development Center. We make our way through Yamatau and discover that Steiner is on Rebirth Island. We then go back to Mason, Woods, and Bowman, and God damn it, they killed Bowman. After making our way through the mission, we get attacked by Kravchenko, where Woods ends up sacrificing himself to kill Kravchenko in the process. With Kravchenko and Woods presumed dead, Mason heads to Rebirth Island to take out Steiner with Reznov. At the end of the mission, Reznov kills Steiner, and then we get to play through Hudson's perspective of the mission, which I thought was pretty cool. As Reznov and Mason were making their way through Rebirth Island, it turns out that Hudson and Weaver were doing the same and were on their way to extract Steiner. This mission, though, is what reveals the biggest plot twist in any Call of Duty game ever, and that's the fact that Reznov was never actually alive that whole time. With Mason being in the hands of Hudson and Weaver now, we finally reach the present time where it's finally revealed who the mystery interrogators were. Hudson and Weaver. Hudson reveals himself and tells us that Reznov had been dead the entire time and for Kuda. Well, we end up knocking Hudson out and walk through the building. Meanwhile, Mason is losing his goddamn mind, seeing Reznov everywhere. This mission also explains that Steiner and Dragovich had implanted the numbers in Mason, making him the key to find where the number station is once and for all. After translating the number sequences, it leads us directly into the Rasalka, which was there from the very start of the game. So along with Hudson and Weaver, we attack the Rasalka and finally kill Dragovich once and for all. And with that, the campaign finally ends. And what the fuck, zombies? Yeah, much like World at War, the game sends you directly into zombies after the end credits, and you even get a really cool cutscene beforehand depicting Nixon, Kennedy, Castro, and McNamara getting ready to take on the zombies. Overall, the campaign in BO1 is one of the best Call of Duty campaigns I've ever played. The characters are as iconic as it gets, the story is memorable, and it's so different from what we had gotten in the previous games that it really makes it feel unique. Of course, while the campaign itself is great, it 
is only half the game though, so why don't we dive into the other modes this game had to offer, starting with multiplayer. The multiplayer in BO1 is genuinely one of the greatest multiplayer experiences I think I've ever had in a Call of Duty game. Now sure, was it a step back from MW2 multiplayer in some aspects? Yes, but I've never played MW2's multiplayer, so leave me alone. BO1's multiplayer to this day is still an absolute blast to play, whether that's online with randoms or just playing with friends. It honestly had a decent amount of depth that we don't really see anymore in modern Call of Duty games. For example, the character customization where you could customize the face paint of each character that you'd use for each faction which is still one of the coolest features i've ever seen in a cod ever sure it's not much nowadays but back in 2010 that was a pretty cool feature another thing i loved about the multiplayer is the maps because this game featured some of the greatest maps in call of duty history it had the first appearance of nuketown in a call of duty game array firing range launch all these maps that were incredibly well designed and played a massive role in making the multiplayer as fun as it was there's so many other little things that added to the fun of the multiplayer as well with the sound design being being one of them. Whoever was in charge of the sound design for Black Ops 1 did a fantastic job as every sound in this game is incredibly satisfying. The level up sounds, the gun sounds, everything sounds so damn good in this game and it's awesome. Now when it comes down to the actual modes in the multiplayer, there's really not a whole lot, only consisting of 8 modes across the entire multiplayer. There were also wager matches which were honestly pretty damn fun and I wish they'd bring them back. It was essentially gambling in Call of Duty which is pretty awesome if you ask me. If you for whatever reason missed out on BO1 as a kid and never got to experience the multiplayer, I highly suggest going to buy a copy of the game, after watching this video of course, and playing it yourself because even in 2024, it's damn fun. Now that I've talked about, about multiplayer, I think it's time to talk about zombies. Zombies as a mode was introduced all the way back in World at War and that more or less served as the starting point for the zombies mode we get in Black Ops 1. BO1 zombies took what World at War zombies started and added a lot more depth to it, giving us two maps to play on the disc as well as a whole new mode called Dead Ops Arcade and I mean, it's fine but the traditional zombies experience will always be 10 times better. BO1 zombies is as fun as it gets when it comes to zombies in Call of Duty. Now I'm complete ass when it comes to zombies in this game because the maps can be a little hard to navigate sometimes, but even then, I can still admit that I have a lot of fun with zombies in this game. It doesn't matter if I usually go down by round 3 because I genuinely have fun playing the mode. The two maps on offer are also some of the most iconic zombies maps of all time, with those of course being 5 and Kino Der Toten. Kino is an excellent map that will always have a special place in my heart since it was the very first map I ever played in COD Zombies, and 5, while not my favorite zombies map of all time, is still a pretty great map. Now at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I'll still always prefer BO2 and Cold War Zombies over BO1 simply because those games had more content and they're definitely easier to go back to than BO1 Zombies, but when BO1 was still brand new, it was definitely a huge step up from Nazi Zombies and was a ton of fun. BO1 Zombies will always be a classic and I'll never forget playing it for the very first time and having to build up the courage to even make it past the main menu to get to the mode since that alone scared the shit out of me as a kid. With all that out of the way though, I think it's time we wrap things up. Overall, Black Ops 1 is an all-time classic Call of Duty game. It had an excellent campaign, the multiplayer was incredibly fun, and zombies in this game was a pretty great time. Not to mention, this game had a pretty awesome soundtrack which really added to how great this game was. There is a reason that this game is always brought up when it comes to talking about the greatest Call of Duty games of all time because it really is just that good. As long as you're not playing the DS version.